Hi, I'm Dr. Baxter Montgomery. I'm a cardiologist and cardiac electrophysiologist uh, here in Houston, Texas. 13 years ago, we started integrating our clinical treatment with plant-based nutrition. So the heart here is in congested heart failure, beating around 20 to 24 percent. Here it's beating about 50 percent. After being on a plant-based diet for 78 days, much improved. Someone in her condition may have needed, you know, surgery, could have needed a bypass surgery, she may have needed a defibrillator, uh, she may have even, you know, been uh, placed on the heart transplant list. But instead of that, you know, with plant-based nutrition, the heart improves significantly. And uh, these are the types of findings we see on a regular basis. It's important for individuals to know that, you know, despite how sick you are, we've seen individuals who are very ill. In fact, I've treated two different patients who were in the hospital on life support. One person on life support, we fed her uh, green food through her peg tube. And I detoxed her in the hospital, and she eventually walked out. So don't give up. We haven't gotten into the most fundamental aspect of our health, which is uh, how we take care of the human brain. And it's as simple as plant-based food, fresh air, sunshine, and water. <laughs> so there's a huge obsession with protein, and a lot of this has to do with the education of the nutrition and, and medical community, or perhaps miseducation, if you will, and uh, protein is emphasized. The Western society, as with other societies, uh, animal protein is a major component of what people eat. When I was growing up, you know, you didn't have a meal if there's not, you know, dead animal flesh on the table. Animal protein can trigger inflammation, it has adverse effects on the kidney, it can have adverse effects on the blood vessels, adverse effects on the heart. You get more than enough protein from plant-based foods. The most important nutrient, in my opinion, is water. I mean, the healthy human body in its healthy state is about 70-75% water. I'll pose a question, I say, well, if you were you know, left on a, an island and deserted for just, let's say, 25 days, you can have 25 days worth of baked chicken, or you have 25 days of water. You can't have both, one or the other. And almost invariably, people choose the water, because they know that they can't survive 25 days without water. As much as we emphasize eating the proper food, which you know starts, with a, and, starts and ends with a plant-based diet, uh, it's also important to get fresh air and sunshine on a regular basis. So at least a couple of hours. Man-made rainbows. <laughs> Oh wow, another patient who's currently in her mid-90s came to see us at the age of 89 and at that time she was taking about 22 medications including about 40 units of insulin twice a day and she had been on insulin for 40 years. We put her on a raw detox and we got off the insulin within a couple of days of her being on the raw detox. She's down to taking no medications the last I've seen and she hardly has to come and see us as a patient. She's in her mid-90s uh, now. You know, I came into this arena as a traditional doctor, you know, doing procedures and setting them on the optimal medications. However, when I made this discovery for my own health and then subsequently for my patients, I made a major change. As far as I know, we're the only uh, facility in the United States that has an on-site plant-based restaurant that integrates it all in one. If I'm a physician who likes steak and eggs, it would be very difficult for me to counsel and aggressively counsel the patient uh, away from eating these foods. You know, this is our, our commercial kitchen, our restaurant, and um, the medical facility of the future will have a designated restaurant kitchen that functions not only from a culinary standpoint, but also from a scientific standpoint. We see individuals in severe congestive heart failure, which is often thought of as a death sentence. But when they make fundamental changes in the way they eat, they go from a death sentence to a life sentence, and that's an important differential. I'm Patricia Wiggins, and this is my husband, Carl. He's Dr. Montgomery's patient. In this three-week time, he's eliminated about 40 pounds of fluid from his body, and his mental clarity is much better, and he's now walking without his cane. When we came in, he could barely walk with the cane and he had to hold on to me or to the wall or, or something to steady himself. So what you can see here is um, a model of an artery and there's several slices here. And when someone consumes a, a diet high in saturated fat, 
And saturated fat, by the way, is code word for animal protein fat. If you then start to look anywhere an artery has this amount of disease, you're compromising blood flow to that organ. And if the thin core ruptures, that's what leads to a heart attack. And so this predisposed to heart disease. This is the type of lesion that would be considered for a stent placement or for bypass surgery. However, you can reverse this type of disease with uh, optimal plant-based nutrition. It was that severe. He wanted to make food our medicine and not pharmaceuticals. The added bonus is the fact that he is an MD, he is a cardiologist, he does know that part of medicine and he's not um, against it if it's needed. So if you were to look at uh, all of the healthcare facilities here, all the hospitals, all the emergency rooms uh, in this expansive medical center, and we were to walk around and search for one patient who was suffering from protein deficiency, uh, we'd be challenged to find one. <laughs> in regards to the prevalence of heart disease among different ethnic groups, the CDC clearly shows that African American women have the most heart disease in terms of prevalence and morbidity to mortality from heart disease. Next to them would be uh, African American men. More women die from heart disease than men in general, and then more African American women die from heart disease than any other race, gender segment uh, that, that we know of. Availability, convenience, these are all important things that, uh, that I find and I think it's going to make a difference the more we make the food available. People do not realize how delicious plant food is. At the end of the day, it's going to be the food that makes the difference. I have a lot of friends who are ethical vegans and, and, and I applaud you. When I came into eating plant-based, I wasn't aware of uh, the uh, horrors of, that happen to animals and I think you know there's more more messaging needs to come about uh, with that. The other aspect of being ethical vegans is that you know we have to look at our own bodies and we have to be ethical to ourselves first and foremost because if you know we're not healthy then we can't be a benefit to others, animals, etc. So I often tell my patients that the number one animal you want to be ethical to is yourself. So foods that are minimally processed, uh, raw, you want a lot of live foods, it has a, the water content is maintained. These are going to be some of the most healthy foods and if it is cooked, uh, you want to either dehydrate it at relatively low temperatures, boil or steam it. And these are some simple approaches that individuals can take to consume uh, a diet that's not only healthy for the environment uh, as a whole, but also healthy for your local environment, which is your body. If we can fundamentally change the way we eat, we can get rid of the need for so much uh, expense and so much uh, time and effort toward helping people get better, or I should say, uh, helping people live with their illnesses. By we can just simply change what they eat, we can help them reverse their conditions and uh, live a healthier life.